I'd just like you to clarify because um, the U.S. government through the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, on last evening has issued a warning about uh, this visa restriction uh, of people tampering with the democracy of Liberia. What does that mean? Is, it, is the warning directed I mean, at a particular political party or individual? I want you to clear that. And secondly, the U.S. government also sanctions some Nigerian politicians as part of the Global Ministry Act. And it's um, the government disappointed, I mean the U.S. government, are they disappointed in the fact that the Liberian government has not yet investigated these individuals? Great, well, the, um, first of all, the, the Glow Mag sanctions are different from this 3C visa restriction policy. Uh, the Glow Mag uh, sanctions are implemented by the Department of Treasury and they target people who we believe have engaged in corrupt activities or abuses of human rights. The, BC, the 3C visa restriction policy um, covers anybody who undermines the democratic process uh, of the elections. And this can be pretty much anybody who engages in activities that would undermine that process. And so some examples could be if somebody tried to steal uh, a ballot box or if somebody tried to access computer servers uh, that contained the data that was being uploaded. Um, if someone incites violence against a journalist or against an election observer or a poll worker, um, that would be considered undermining uh, the electoral process. Um, threats against journalists uh, of physical harm for what they're reporting um, while they're freely exercising their freedom of free speech, uh, that could also be considered a violation or an undermining of the democratic process, uh, as well as anybody who might be caught uh, forging ballots um, obstruct, obstructing observers who are trying to observe uh, the process at balloting places, um, and disseminating fake news, um, which is something that should be a, a strong concern amongst everybody. So as you can see from the examples I've given, this could happen uh, pretty much uh, to anybody uh, who under, under, undertakes these, uh, these activities. It's not directed at the government of Liberia, as I said in my statement. It's not directed against any individual political party or any person or any organization. Uh, we are not here to support an individual political candidate. We are not here to support an individual political party. We are here to support the democratic political process uh, so that the elections ultimately reflect the will of the Liberian people. Okay, and my second question was, uh, the U.S. government has sanctioned some government officials mm -hmm. in Liberia. Are you disappointed at the government of the United States of America that Liberia has not investigated any of the individuals? Yes, I think so, because um, anti-corruption is one of the top priorities of the U.S. government. Fighting corruption and human rights abuses, I mean, let's be clear, uh, these are serious uh, accusations, and if the evidence is there, um, it's evidence of, of serious activities that harm the people of Liberia. Uh, corruption uh, corrupts the uh, business climate, it makes it difficult for companies uh, to invest here and to come here if they feel the rule of law is not being upheld. Uh, corruption can also take money from the government coffers uh, and put it in the hands of a few. And this is money that could also be spent on things like hospitals, schools, roads, infrastructure, medicine, things uh, that the people of Liberia need to improve their welfare. So this is one of the reasons why we've implemented uh, these sanctions. And they're, they're a top priority of the US government. I do not want to see corruption anywhere. I'd be very disappointed to see it anywhere, uh, including in an elected official. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, we'll go next here, and then to Denise, and then let me know. My name is Pat Lekomar, and I work for the State Railway. Um, is this visa restriction the highest punishment that the U.S. can give to anybody who tempered with the, uh, with the democracy in Liberia? I say this to say because similar action was taken in Sierra Leone but the government is ongoing, the election results stands. So what can be done that Liberians are concerned to reverse uh, that kind of uh, decision? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's, a, it's a, a deterrent. Um, we know that travel to the U.S. is something that people value. Not everybody cares about it, uh, but there are a good number of people, I think, in Liberia um, who value the ability to travel back and forth to the United States, whether for pleasure or tourism or business, for medical care, uh, for attending educational institutions. So um, we think it's, um, it's
it's a policy that should uh, deter people from engaging in some of the activity that I've, that I've mentioned. Um, it is right now our, our main uh, restriction that we would use uh, to encourage people to abide by the democratic process uh, and the rule of law. Uh, by nature, uh, because our visa policies uh, are, are confidential, anybody who applies for a visa is entitled to confidentiality. So we would not be naming uh, individuals publicly uh, who are subject to these restrictions. Great, please. Okay, my name is Dennis Lipton. I report for ABC Radio and correspondent to Voice of America. Mm -hmm. So I have two questions. Does the U.S. believe some people or individuals are trying to interfere with the elections? Secondly, some officials were sanctioned um, for corruption, but one of them is running for elective opposition on the ruling party ticket. How concerned is the U.S. about corruption in Nigeria? Well, uh, in terms of um, people running for office, I mean, it's up to the Liberian people to decide uh, who they want to vote for. I mean, people have to make that decision based on, on a variety of information. Um, for those designated under the GLOMAG uh, sanctions, that information is available on the websites of our the Department of Treasury as well as others. Um, people can look at that information and come to their own conclusions. Uh, ultimately, uh, voters will have to vote their own conscience side based on all the information they see, which information is credible, which information is not credible, um, and make their own decisions. But one of the hallmarks of a democracy is that each person um, has, a, has a say in who gets to govern them uh, and who gets to uh, uh, adopt and make the policies uh, that should benefit the welfare of the people of the country. And so um, I would just say it's up to the people of Liberia to make that decision. Um, and your first question about the three C policy, I would say no. Right now, uh, we do not have any evidence of wrongdoing uh, taking place. We have not adopted this policy because we have found such evidence uh, and that we're, we're adopting it to target individual people that we know about today. Uh, this policy is governing our future actions to let everybody know that we're watching the democratic process here in Liberia very closely. Uh, we want to support the people of Liberia uh, in having fair and peaceful elections. And I really want to stress the word peaceful because uh, there's a lot of rhetoric that we know is going around in the media and on social media, um, sometimes inspired by uh, individual supporters, could be campaign officials, it could be others. Uh, um, we hope that while people exercise their right to free speech, they do not incite violence uh, because we want to see this outcome respected peacefully. Uh, any any uh, downturn, uh, into violent reactions uh, against the results when they are announced uh, would be a, a, something we definitely want to avoid at all costs. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, Michael. Welcome to Liberia. My name is Alaska Moore Johnson, and I write for the Independent Prime newspaper. Uh, so you mentioned certain family members will be affected by the uh, <coughs> visa restrictions. Can you, you can you list the family members that will be affected, and why should the just suffer for the unjust? Well, it uh, really depends on the situation, and it depends on the individual, and it depends on the relationship uh, of the family members to that individual. Um, and uh, I'll just leave it at that. Right now, again, uh, the procedure is confidential. Uh, we know that people utilize uh, the ability to go to the United States to benefit their family members, whether taking them uh, to educational institutions or for other reasons. Uh, and so. Um, we don't feel that anybody should be benefiting from that right if they are engaged in undermining the democratic process here in Liberia. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> My name is Gerald Kwanyine. I write for Front Page Africa newspaper. Yeah, so the visa, the visa restriction policy, uh, critics may say it is soft because some of the actions by these people who undermine uh, democracy it could be grief and stopping somebody from going to your country that offenders might say America is not my country, I would just stay here. Uh, what are some measures beside the visa restriction that the US uh, may you know, deem necessary to take against these people? One. Two, they are concerned by some people, meaning in the opposition, that the National Elections Commission has not displayed the final uh, voter role, the registration role. Mm -hmm. 
they have uh, gone to court. Is that a concern to the U.S. government, especially you on your visit to Liberia? Well, I can say that I've heard the concerns about the voter uh, role uh, mentioned previously by um, various observer organizations and civil society members. I'd have to refer you to the National Elections Commission for questions about that uh, and about the intricacies of the electoral process. Uh, from what I've heard, the role is, is expected to be published shortly, uh, but I don't know exactly what date. Uh, but I'm hopeful that that question will be resolved soon. Uh, on the issue of the restrictions, um, this is just our viewpoint. There are many observers at this election around the world, um, and Liberians have a sovereign right to determine their own government uh, without an outside interference. Um, through these restrictions, we're basically uh, making the point that anybody who's caught undermining the electoral process here in Liberia uh, would not be welcome uh, to visit our country. Uh, and uh, that's really, uh, I think it's a credible deterrent, uh, but it's not going to deter everybody, and I realize that. But right now, uh, this is the principal measure that we'll be using. Anyone? We'll, we'll come to you in a moment. I just want to give the opportunity for anybody who hasn't asked a question yet. Go ahead. Yes, yes. so let me. You, you earlier said you've met with uh, certain individuals, you know, individual justice, civil society actors, etc. What, what is that one message they've all told you about this whole elections process? Well, I think the main message is that they, um, they uh, agree with us, that they want to see um, a free, uh, fair, and peaceful election uh, take place, uh, as the president had committed in New York. And I would add that the president also made that commitment to our president, President Joseph Biden, uh, last year in December at the Africa Leaders Summit. We hosted uh, the leaders of several countries who have elections in 2023, and each of those leaders stated that they are dedicated and committed to holding fair uh, and peaceful elections. And so the officials I met with today uh, and yesterday, and especially at the NEC, the National Elections Commission, um, all stated that they abide by that commitment. Now, we hope that commitment will be followed. Um, the res results will be seen. We have observer missions uh, throughout the country. Those missions tell me they're quite confident in their ability to monitor all stages of the election process, including the collecting of the ballots, transmission, uh, the numbers uh, reported on those ballots, uh, the integrity of the data center where those, uh, those votes are going to be uploaded. Um, so we will see. We will see what the observer missions report uh, on election day and afterwards. Uh, and we will look at all the available evidence to see uh, if, uh, if uh, that has actually happened. Um, but right now, uh, the way things are going right now, we have not seen any irregularities. Let's go to, we'll go here. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Farkley again. Uh, I just want to know what is that uh, specific compelling uh, message or concern that you return with? That I will return with to, yeah. to Washington? Yes. Well, I'll report to Washington that the, the people of Liberia that I've met with all share uh, our interest, again, in uh, Liberia holding a free, fair, peaceful election. I think many people in this country would like to see uh, the elections here set a new standard uh, and be an example for the rest of the region. Uh, as you know, um, West Africa, and particularly in the Sahel region, has been beset uh, by a number of anti-democratic activities. Uh, democratically elected governments overthrown uh, by military leaders, uh, authoritarian governments uh, set up, which have even less accountability uh, to the people than a democratic government would. So um, my message when I go back to Washington is that we would like to see uh, democracy continue to thrive in countries that are our close partners, and those countries include Liberia. Uh, and I will ask uh, people that I meet with back in Washington when I return to watch closely uh, over the next two weeks, uh, because uh, the attention of the world is, is going to be on your country. And uh, we are supporting you, we're pulling for you, we're great friends of Liberia, and we're great friends of the Liberian people, so we wish you the best of luck in this endeavor. Yes, um, just to go back to the previous question you asked, um, a follow up to that, the crimes, although the Liberian law, I know that crimes are not transferable, and I don't know whether it is the same in the United States, um, and 
also the, the US is signatory to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So I'd like to know why is the US considering um, founding members of those who may have or who commit crimes as part of the, the restriction? Well, as, as I said in my previous answer, um, we, uh, we want to restrict uh, the visas of anybody who's caught uh, undermining um, the elections uh, in, in Liberia. Uh, we think that travel to the United States is a privilege um, that should not be enjoyed by anybody that engages in these kinds of undemocratic activities that I've listed. Uh, and so whether or not anybody else uh, would be restricted on that basis, it really depends on, it's on a case by case basis. Uh, depends on the nature of the, act, the activity uh, and, uh, and the possible involvement of anybody else in that activity. I think we'll, we'll come to and then I just want to, we've got a few minutes left, so if you do have a question, please let me know. And we'll, we'll end you up next. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'd like to know because you have had a time to uh, sort of information, you have talked to uh, stakeholders, like you said. So uh, in your own words, do you think that like, like you have all it takes to uh, to have a free, fair, and transparent mm -hmm. election mm -hmm. from what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're asking me to make a prediction, and um, you know, I, simply, I simply can't do that. All I can say right now is from what I've heard from the observer team, <coughs> What, what I've observed myself at the uh, headquarters of the National Elections Commission, um, the activities that took place in the warehouse where I saw the workers, again, with no air conditioning, uh, packaging all the ballot materials that are going out to various places around the country, uh, talking to the cybersecurity experts in the data center uh, of the NEC, um, and talking to other stakeholders. So far, they've seen uh, or, or told me that the process has been transparent. that uh, this uh, electoral process will proceed smoothly. There's no perfect process. There are still hiccups along the way. Of course, there are still the questions about the voter roll, which I think uh, will be addressed in the coming days. Um, but what happens on election day, it's hard to tell. We feel that we have good coverage. We feel the observer teams have good access. Uh, but again, it really depends what happens on election day itself. And uh, I'm just not in a position to make a prediction on how it will go. Thank you so much. So my name is Sia Wimeabu, and I do report for QFM. The United States government is coming up with this restriction you know, visa, I mean, of visa for those who have been sanctioned by me. Uh, is the U.S. government actually committed to promoting democracy in Liberia? Because this restriction you're coming with, uh, those that will be sanctioned or that have been sanctioned will not go to the state, but they still remain in Liberia here. They're involved in all other activities. They still have influence. How does that help the country? Well, in terms of how you handle these situations for individuals uh, in, involved in Liberia, that's a matter for the Liberian judicial system uh, and the Liberian people themselves. I mean, uh, we can affect um, our own actions and our own privileges that we have, the ability for people to travel to the U.S., <laughs> the ability for people in the case of the WOMAG sanctions to do business with U.S. individuals businesses or organizations. Um, this is the role and the part that we play um, in these kinds of relationships. But for anything that takes place within Liberia, amongst the Liberian citizens, uh, any kind of malfeasance, malfeasance um, that's going to have to be addressed by your own legal system. Well, I, I do want to thank everyone for coming today, this afternoon and uh, really appreciate uh, both to you